to penetrate the fortress or some other variation of entering this fortress without its consent. Hello everyone, I'm Tim. There are dozens of kata in karate and there are some that really seem to be all over the place like Naihanshi, Sanshin or Kushanku but few kata are both enormously popular yet so difficult to trace. I'm basing today's video on my own experience but also on an article by Matthew Absokardu. If you're watching this, I hope I didn't butcher your name. I'll be sure to put links to your website in the description down below. Go and read the article, as I'm really not going to tell you everything here. Anyway, Basai, Basai, Basai Sho and Dai, together with the whole who's who of Master X's Basai, will cross your path when you study karate at one time sooner rather than later. For me, it was a kata I did to earn my black belt many years ago, and I'm sure this is the case for many of you as well. If not, it sure might have crossed your mind. Now since Matthew's article promises to make sense out of it, allow me to provide you with a first little glimpse at this clarification. First things first, what the hell is the meaning of the name Basai? Always fun times when white westerners try to translate Japanese and Okinawan words as if both are one, the same language, and two, easily translatable into English. So for Basai, there are three common pronunciations, being Basai, Basai, and patsai. The easy distinction is this, when you hear the B, it's Japanese, when you hear the P, it's Okinawan, and when you hear patsai, don't worry about it, that's just a different spelling. Now as for the translation, well, there are a few possibilities, so take your pick. It either means to penetrate the fortress, or some other variation of entering this fortress without its consent. It's actually the most commonly accepted translation, but there are others, like Leopard Lion, for instance, or Eight Fortresses. Finally, Hokama Sensei theorizes it was simply the name of some illustrious person, so who knows. In the end, without conclusive proof, let's not go too deep into this. Or let's, uh, let's agree that they are all possible. As the name of the Kada can be traced back, what chance do we have for the actual origins of the kata? Let's see, not even Matsumura Sokon, you know, the bushy slash royal bodyguard slash scary scary man, knew of a single source. And this leaves us with the idea that it was rather a compilation of Chinese techniques in an Okinawan setting. Specifically techniques from Fujian White Crane style, but this is difficult to verify as no version of Basai is practiced in modern Chinese Kung Fu. So. Today we can distinguish four groups of Basai, Tomari, Shuri, Japanese and Nakamura. Now Tomari Basai is the best known and preserved group of Okinawan Basai. Two of the more recent karate masters associated with this group were also two channel favorites, Kian Chotoku and Motobu Choki. Shuri Basai can be traced back to Matsumura Soko making it the prime influencer for Itosu's Basai and also for Funakoshi's Basai. Matsumura established a Sho and Dai version, something you can still find today also in Shotokan and Shitoryu for example. Now Japanese Basai are probably most well known for Shotokan and Shitoryu circles. So as I said, directly influenced by the Shuri group. So both Funakoshi and Mabuni are responsible for giving us Basai Dai and Basai Sho. There are also some Tomori influenced Pasai Kada that are in the Japanese group, for example the one practiced in Chito Ryu, not to confuse with Shito Ryu. Finally, the smallest group, the Nakamura Pasai. Smallest branch, most mysterious, and an ideal time to remind you to really click the link below for Matthew's awesome article. While you're there, hit the subscribe button or my kid will cry. Outside of karate, versions of Basai can be found in certain Korean martial arts like Taekwondo, Tang Soo Do or Soo Bak Do. So it's found everywhere through these martial arts. Kata origins are never easily recovered, but few are as obscure as Basai. Luckily, there are some Kata with either easier to trace origin stories or just a way more recent one, like for instance the Pinan series. Click here for the story behind the Pinan Kata. For now, let me wish you a wonderful day. And as always, thanks for watching. Chuck Norris can drown a fish.